Our opening hymn is found on page seven. Hark of Holy Voices Sounding. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, grant us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn is on page seven. There's a voice in the wilderness crying. Son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the world, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. so-and-so was this and 
Herod was the king. That was the gospel writers, the Bible writers' way of dating an event. They didn't say in the year, you know, 02 or whatever, okay. They dated it by saying who is in power, who is doing what. And so this tells us that this is more than just a nice part of the nice Christmas story. They dated this as an event that happened at a particular place, at a particular time in history among a particular people. We call that the scandal of particularity. Right? That means it's a scandal that God became incarnate, the God we know that is everywhere, in a particular place, at a particular time, in a particular form of Jesus of the town of Nazareth. So that that's just our way of the way to get the grounding in that to say, well, exactly what happened, we don't know, we weren't there, but we can be sure that something like this happen and we can date it. And it's a way for scholars who are not in the Bible to find other resources to date it and be able to determine, you know, kind of what was going on. But what's going on for us today is that you and me are here to worship God at a particular time, in a particular place, in a particular way. That's who we are. John the Baptist was a prophet out in the wilderness living rough. That's who he is. And he's quoting Isaiah, a prophet from long, long, long before John was even considered to be a person on the world. And it's talking about a people in the wilderness and a prophet in the wilderness. And John is talking from the wilderness to other people, the people who may or may not be out in the wilderness, often they were on the other side of the river. Isaiah was talking to a people in the wilderness. They were in the dispersion, they were not a home. And they're both saying, look, we've got to get ready. You guys, in the reading from Malachi, you guys are getting ready to come back to your home in the temple, you've been out among all the Babylonians and heathens. But in order to come back and be that righteous people of God, you've got to go through some stuff to get yourself cleaned up. And he uses the image of a refiner's fire and fuller soap. Why soap? Okay. And we're talking about this this morning. Think about a blacksmith, someone who's a refiner of silver or even steel, you know, first they heat it up till it gets real hot. They'll have a piece of metal. They heat it up till it's really hot and it's malleable. And then what do they do? They bang on it and bang and bang and bang because what they're doing is getting rid of all the impurities. And they heat it up again and they bang on it and they heat it again. And eventually you have a pure silver or a pure steel if you go to iron. That's called the dross. It's burning off the dross, burning off the garbage, burning off all the stuff that keeps you in the wilderness and prevents God from getting to you to help refine you. Now, I don't think I'm the only one, but I got some funny looks this morning, so maybe not everybody's had this experience, but there have been lots of times in my life when I knew that God heated eat me up and was banging on me, trying to get me back on track. Hopefully I don't have to get banged on so hard anymore, but as soon as I say that, you know, this afternoon, I'm gonna need a good head banging. It caused me two by four, okay? To get rid of all the dross, get rid of the stuff that covers up the image of God in you. And that's a pretty drastic vision. When we get to Isaiah, or when we get to John the Baptist and Isaiah, who's quoting Isaiah, he's saying, look, the valleys are going to be made low, the mountains brought down. In other words, God is going to smooth out the road for all of you. So it's easier, one, for God to get to you, but it's easier. We have to make that way straight to us so that God, Christ, the Messiah, can get to us. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Well, straight to where? 
Well, straight to you. Okay, you do have control over that. You can decide to hang on to all of the garbage that gets in the way of your intimacy with God. Or you can say, you know, I'm going to do my best to make the way straight. I'm going to get rid of stuff that keeps God from getting to me. And God, for God's part, Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, is going to make that easier by making the world, uh, making it a little easier for you, smoother, not such a climb. I think it's a two-way street. We got to make it easier for God's path to get to us, and God makes our path into God or and into the world straighter, smoother, easier. That doesn't mean, you know, that they're never going to trip and fall down, okay? But the difference between getting banged on and banged on as we're really hot to get rid of the garbage. And this new way with the coming of the Messiah to say it's all about love and relationship with God. And do what you need to do to allow God to get to you. Some people think that in order to be a good Christian, we have to become a whole new person. We say that we're born anew, we're made, all things are made new. But they think, well, maybe if we, we race, beat ourselves with a strap, or we punish ourselves enough, we beat our breasts, oh, I'm a terrible, terrible person, and, and we grovel in the gravel, that's going to somehow make us a good Christian. I don't think that's how God works. I think we are born, and Scripture tells us this, we are born in the image of God, which is absolutely perfect good. We're born perfect in the image of God. And immediately this world starts, we start accreting garbage. Our job isn't to become a whole new person. Our job to make those past great is to get rid of the stuff, our attitudes, our beliefs, our behaviors, whatever it is, so that the image of God in us that is perfect and beautiful and so we we as children of God can be unveiled, can be revealed, can be set free to come out into the world. I think that's our job in Advent. As we're getting ready for the Messiah, let's get rid of the stuff that will blur or prevent us from really receiving and blessing the ultimate gift of love. Continuing on page three, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and of those made man. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for our redemption of those who live in the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. And he has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
where the table is form two. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Marty, our bishop, Belinda, and Jerry, our priests, Corrine, our postulant, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Carol Lindy. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our prayer list, including Larry, Joey, Virginia, Diane, Sandra, Alan, Ray, Kay, Harry, Shane, Rose, Jerry, Sharon, Jim, Tina, those for whom our prayer chain intercedes, and we pray for any others who may care who we may care to name now. I ask your thanksgivings for clean air, water, and anything else you may name now. I ask your prayers for Abby. Leah, Adam, Frank, Ava, Zoe, Megan, and Margo, as they prepare to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit, that they may be filled with the presence of Christ. Pray for these people. <clears throat> Praise God for those who are for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray, pray for St. Patrick's in Bigsport, Tom Cahill, Senior Warden. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for our homeless outreach projects and for Dan and Don Miller, William and Leslie Moyer, Vicki and Stephen Payne. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance or as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By all we have done, and by all we have undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may lie in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. And your offertory hymn is probably on the back page. What number is it? Yes, on number page eight.
calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through Christ, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Luke, John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory to yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, using our traditional form, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
join me on page six for the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are heard, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is on page 8, People of East.